Welcome to episode four, Dylan Swinart and Dennis Bailey, A Family Affair. This episode centers around a grandfather and grandson duo that race primarily at the high banks of Grandview Speedway. Dylan, as you may know, races weekly for his grandfather, Dennis, while competing against his other grandfather, Ray, and other family members. They are currently running in the modified division at Grandview and took some time this past week to join me for 10 questions and a slot car time trial. Dylan is a dirt star to me for not only his success on the track, but for the way he has worked in the family business during his 15 year career. Dennis is a dirt star for me because of his track championships at Darney Park, Big Diamond, and Grandview, in addition to his love of racing that has had him involved in the sport as a driver and owner for over 50 years. When you are at Grandview Speedway, look out for the number 81 of Dylan Swinehart and Dennis Bailey. Here it is, Dirt Stars and Slot Cars. Episode 4, Dylan Swinehart and Dennis Bailey, A Family Affair. All right, thank you for uh, letting me come in and visit you guys. First question, how many years have you been racing? Uh, so I've been racing since I was five, so this will be my 15th year. And I know you don't race anymore, <laughs> but you're still involved. So uh, I've been racing and going to Grandview since 78. 78. Okay. And then you, from what I understand, you used to race at Dorney Park, right? Yeah. I started out at Dorney Park, and we went to Big Diamond, and I okay. won a championship in 78 up there at Diamond, Big Diamond and went to Grandview in 79 and uh, we won the championship in 81. Right. Yeah, I, I remember I hung out in the pits during that time, right? So I, I remember you pairing up there. Yeah. Time. All right, so first car number and any significance to the car number? How did you pick it? Uh, so my first car number and still my car number is 38. Uh, his is 81, my other grandfather's is 33. So when I was five, uh, I needed to pick out a number for the quarter midgets and uh, the club was only allowed one number per driver. So uh, I took the three from my grandfather, Ray, and then the eight from my grandfather here and made 38. <laughs> okay, and how about you, Dennis? I, going back to the Reading days, Freddie Adams from Kutztown was my man, and uh, he had a number eight, and I just put a one alongside of it, and it's been that way for... Well, I was going to say, I only remember you ever being in 81. Did you ever have another number? I drove for some other people Okay. a couple of years, not often. Okay, because that's all I remember is yeah. 81. My brother and me, we had 80, 80, 81. Uh-huh, okay. Um, and then... The current number. Yeah, uh, my current number is just, he owns a car, so that's what I run. So it's 81. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Full-time, part-time deal? This is a full-time deal, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my living. I'm retired now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. All right. All right, and then um, a career highlight, just one that jumps out at you. Well, obviously, your first win at Grandview sportsman division that was one of my highest points uh it was my first year entering the competition and uh i was beat going into the season i decided that i needed to set goals for myself so originally i set a goal of just qualifying and well i was able to do that and then we started doing good doing top fives and then we just uh had a good enough car after the one week i was able to get out and win uh, and then you gotta always set the next goal right away. And so the next season we won two, I believe, and that was cool. Uh, but probably the highest point was when I was able to get into this car uh, and race for your family's great. We didn't know what we were gonna do. Once again, you set that low goal of qualifying and we did that the very first week. So I realized we need to set goals that we can push ourselves a little bit too. So I hit my first top five, and then I was like, wow, we actually have a shot of winning it. And then we finally picked up our first win in July. And to win on your first year, that means so much more. And that first win is definitely the highest point for me. 
Then he followed it up the following year, last year, and won again. So, so, it's, so it's been okay having a measure driver. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> how about you? I, I can't imagine how many races you've raced. Oh, I can't remember that. No. Okay. I, uh, I had a few drivers. I had Kenny Gilmore and Wilman, John Wilman, one time. Yeah. I had my, my nephew. He was driving my car, and then he had a heart attack at Grandview, mm. and he died in, right, in the I car. Right, I remember that. Uh, who else? Terry Meisler. Who? Oh, Terry Meisler, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Kevin Hart had this, right? With yeah. Terry? Terry, me, we, I think he won three or four. four. Yeah. Okay. Ken yeah, Hart, that ran. And Hart, that, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he won a couple. He's had a lot of drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good, right? We <laughs> <laughs> must do all right. We're still going. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and, and then, you know, something in your career that maybe didn't go the way you thought it should have gone, but it, but you learned from it and, and made you stronger. You have something like that? I mean, just coming back every week, I feel like we're stronger from the week before. Uh, Probably one of the worst moments was I was running by buddy Nika Flammer's car, uh, and our deal was I was going to run the uh, short track super series, and we just we were so fast right out of the gate. My very first time running his car, his first time having that car on the track, uh, I was leading with five to go. The motor broke, and it just was a struggle. We came back next time I drove the car, I think I got fifth or something, uh, and then. We ended out the year upside down, <laughs> oh, wow. and destroying his car was, ter I felt terrible, but we got the car back together for him uh, for Saturday night, that was on a Tuesday. That was probably one of the toughest things we've done, is get a car completely stripped down, uh, got the front end clipped, and put it back together in less than a week. That was one of the toughest points in my career. Do you recall something that you were like, oh, I'm throwing this in? I'm not going to do this anymore, but, but you, you did it anyway? <laughs> no, not really. I, uh, I'm retired, so I do bodies and uh, make bumpers and rough rails, so I'm actually, my full-time job is trying to make money for the race car. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my, uh, my real personal, I get really personal here. Married or single? I... I have a girlfriend, Lydia. <laughs> so. Yeah. Hand over to Lydia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and of course. Oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife, Joy. Well, now she's part owner, right? She will tap or whatever I do. Oh, okay. whatever you see. All right. All right. <laughs> I had read that somewhere that she was part owner. So. She's. You did go to Enduros in, in uh, Grandview? No. I'm a promoter. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I don't know where that. <laughs> no, I, I get up maybe twice a year. And uh, usually like the 38, 38 or yeah. whatever. And then usually one other one to watch my nephew race. Okay. So... I think this is good for the people that watch this. What kind of advice do you have? If somebody's out there and they're on the fence, you know, I, I'd like to try this, but I don't know how to go about it. What kind of advice do you have to them? Yeah, so if you're going to do it, just know that there's going to be way more lows and ups. Uh, Grandview, if you're going to start there, that is one of the toughest, if not the toughest track around. Uh, you go there every week, the track could be a little different. You could be fast one week, the next week it could be not as good. And just week to week basis, you're always scratching your head. You, we won the one week last year, the next week we came back, we were not as good. Uh, just keep your head up all the time. You, you are not always gonna be fast. There's tough competition there. And the drivers are the best of the best. And you have to understand that going in you probably should start in a lower division than sportsman. That competition is just as stiff as the upper division. So uh, 
just keep your head up. It's hard. It's a lot of work. And if you don't put the time in, you're not going to get the results you want. You just always have to keep being motivated to do it. Make sure your cars uh, work in the way you want it to. And every week, I personally would just try something. If, if you're not always trying something, you're not getting anywhere. And you just got to be confident about what you're doing and make the right adjustments, which a lot of the times you don't. So just keep your head up and just keep going at it. OK. Dennis, I'm, I'm going to change this up a little bit for you for the question. I, now, you're a car owner. Say I'm a guy off the street, and I want to get involved maybe as a pit crew member or something. Can I come up to you and say, hey, do you need any help on Saturday night? Or what's the best way to, to do something like that? Well, I've been fortunate enough that I've had the same crew for the last 20 years almost. Oh, wow. Yeah, we stick together pretty good. Uh, yes, we always need help, but we need good help. Somebody that understands and you can depend on, you know. Uh, Joe Blow comes in here and he's supposed to do something and forgets it or something, you know. We can't have that. Right, that's a big deal. I'd rather have people that know what they're doing than have to watch everybody see if he's doing it right, you know. That's good. The new kid starting out, he has to make up his mind right from the beginning. Does he want to do it for fun or does he want to try to win? Does he want to try to win? Better bring his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share this old joke that I heard. How do you make a million dollars in racing? <laughs> Have you heard that one? Yeah. Just start with two million. Do what? Yeah. How do you make a million dollars? <laughs> See, I was racing pretty much. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I had this mess. Like, how do you make a million dollars in racing? Start with two. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> All okay. right. So the the uh, again. Why I'm here, have you ever raced slot cars? I, I have tried a couple times, not very often. <laughs> okay, and I know you already told me you never. No, when you say slot, what, what do they look like? A little <laughs> car? A little car, well, there's HO, which are real small. That's the one I, when I was young, and, good and that's what I had as a kid, and then when I got older, I had now what's called 132 okay, scale. Yeah, so the bigger are, ones. Yeah. And then um, I, I want to finish up the last question. We're up to question 10 already. Um, what's your schedule like this year? Where are you going to be racing? And then tell me what sponsors you'd like to mention. As far as I know, we're pretty much only going to run Grandview as far as I know. Unless one week, like last year, we decided to go out to BAPS. He just told me, let's go. And I was available, so we went. The sponsors this year is a little tough. Everyone's uh, title money with uh, the pandemic and stuff. But uh, this year we're gonna have uh, Bailey Fabrications. Uh, my grandfather owns a body shop here. Uh, he's building dollies right now. So if you need one, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, then we got Schaefer's Motorsports and hoping to get a couple more uh, this year. Decca is gonna be hopefully on the car once again. Uh, yeah, Outlaw Racing Engines uh, builds our motors every year, and he does a great job. Uh, we're hoping to get a couple more, like uh, Crow Arms. Uh, they're hopefully going to come on board, so we'll see what happens this year. All right, well, good luck with that. Now, the most exciting part of tonight, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm going to go get my, my car set up. You're racing the back of my car. Oh, yeah? It's high tech. <laughs> no seatbelt. I can tell no seatbelt. I can tell you're impressed with us. <laughs> and uh, for my viewers here, all 200 of them, this is going to be the first time we're doing it under lights. And it's very <laughs> cold out, so I'm hoping okay. it's going to work. So um, give us a couple minutes, we'll set up. And you don't want to interview my wife? No. <laughs> I'll interview anyone. No. We, we What's it have... like to have. A race car driver in the family. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no, I don't. I can you tell you me. that for every driver, good driver, there's a good woman behind them. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that in life. 
Because I know it, I couldn't do without my wife. Make sure you get that there. <laughs> she puts up with me. I'm sure your wife puts up with you too, right? Well, I, I try to teach her as much as I can. <laughs> there you go. Been tired. 17.30, a 2.32 is your fastest, and you were number one. <laughs> A 248, and you were number one. <laughs> Thanks again to Dylan for inviting me to the 81 shop and the trophy room. To Dennis, and if you haven't noticed, he's quite a character, Joanne and Lydia for making a cold February night in Kutztown a special evening for me and my crew. And as always, I'd like to thank my wife and kids for all that they do to make this show happen. Please remember to like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. If you are a dirt star and would like to have a crack at setting fast time, contact me and I will come to you. Please come back next time for episode five. See you then.